Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry P. Cook, and I'm here to give you a breakdown and review of The Crow, which is just released the other day. Before we do that, of course, I should acknowledge that this is a remake of a kind of the original film from the 90s, starring the late Brandon Lee, which of course was based on the comic book series. I should also note that that's a film that I saw once and remember liking and thinking was a pretty cool movie but I don't have any particularly high reverence for it like others seem to, and I never read the comics. So that's where I come from as it concerns this IP going into this film. So what happens in the movie? Well, at the beginning, as a child, Eric endures a troubled life that involved the death of his beloved horse and a strained relationship with his alcoholic mother. Decades later, Eric's living in an institution for troubled youth where he meets and befriends a young woman named Shelly, who had taken refuge at this center by deliberately getting caught by the cops with drugs in order to escape Rogue or Reg, I'm not sure how you say his name, a crime lord who is after her because of a video that she has implicating him in some crimes. Eric and Shelly soon find themselves very much enamored with each other when Marion, Reg's right hand, arrives at the institution looking for Shelley, at which point Eric and Shelley escape the facility and at the same time, the clutches of Rogue or Reg, the villain. They then further bond over their love of music and fall fast in love, Romeo and Juliet style, and spend a certain number of weeks just enjoying each other and their romance. One night, however, Reg's men find and murder them both. Eric then finds himself in the afterlife in a representation of a warehouse full of crows when Kronos, a spirit guide, explains to him that he'll have to kill Rogue and everyone else in his organization involved in killing Shelly in order to get Shelly back. Eric is then revived and assisted by a crow in hunting down and killing Reg's men. He later finds out by looking at the video on Shelley's phone, that Reg had taken possession of Shelley's mind in the past and ordered her to kill another woman, which she did. And so this is the video that Reg was after. At this point, Eric apparently experiences some doubt about Shelley, about who she really is. And because of this, he's told by Kronos that she's going to hell and that even if he kills everybody involved now, he can't have her back. Eric's love for Shelly being stronger than his own will to live. Eric asks Kronos if he can take her place in hell if he completes the mission. He's told that he can, and so he makes that deal with the crow. He's going to finish the mission, kill all these people, and Shelly is going to be resurrected and saved from going to hell, but he is not going to be able to save himself. So she will live on and have a life, but he will not. So he heads to an opera house where Reg's men are all standing guard as two other of Rogue's associates watch the opera and he kills all of them. He kills all the guards, all the men, and the two associates. He then goes to Rogue's country estate, finds him there, and of course kills him, enabling him to rescue Shelley from the darkest depths. And she comes back to life where they briefly reunite and he explains to her that he isn't going to be able to be with her, but that she's going to go on living. As the movie ends, Eric does a voiceover about how their love will live on in her and everything that she does. And that even though he can't be with her, that's almost enough for him to be okay. And that's where the movie ends. So, you know, this movie, when the trailer first came out, got a lot of crap and a lot of hate from the usual suspects. Who, it would seem, thought that this was going to be some kind of woke version of The Crow because they think everything new that's coming out, especially if it's a revamped version of something else, is going to be all woked up. And, you know, they hated on the look of the character you know, how Skarsgård looks as the crow 
because I guess they thought he looked like an emo beta guy or some stupid thing. Oh, he looked kind of girly. I don't know. It, it didn't make any sense to me. I think, you know, it's 2024, not 1994. And the character's going to look different. We have different aesthetics. So I didn't understand that. And I never understand how they can hate on a movie before it comes out. From the trailer, this movie seemed perfectly fine. There didn't seem to be anything in the trailer to me that said it was going to be woke or lame or bad or anything negative. So I don't know where that comes from, except for, you know, their standard playbook of shitting on everything new, everything that comes out. Myself, I just went into it with an open mind like I do everything else, even things that I have reservations of my own about. And my overall reaction to this movie is that it's okay. You know, there's nothing great about this movie, but I didn't think there was anything horrible about it. I found the pacing to be okay. You know, they don't make him actually become the crow, as it were, until the last 20 minutes. And I think maybe they could have done that differently. They could have made him become the crow a little earlier because, you know, he dies and finds himself in the afterlife, kind of like uh, an undead person who can move between the underworld and, you know, the real world and interact with it and the people in it and take physical damage without dying. He just gets sent back to the underworld and has to go back out again, although he does feel pain. And so that's what he is for a good chunk of the movie once he and Shelley are killed. and. I don't know. I thought that part was lackluster. I think it would have had more gravitas if he had been the crow during that part of the movie, you know, not just a sort of undead guy with the ability to resurrect, but without the full hour of the crow, which he doesn't get until the last 20 minutes. So I didn't love that, but it doesn't make the movie bad. It's just lackluster. I also didn't like the fact that we don't really know what the heck Rogue is, or Reg, however you say that word. We don't know what he is. He's clearly supernatural. He has a power that he can use to whisper into people's ears and make them do stuff, you know, control their minds. But like, what is he? And why does he do it? It doesn't seem like they don't ever give you like a reason, like what he gets out of it. They don't ever show that. Also, if he's this powerful person like this, and can do this stuff. Why in the world would he be afraid of a video coming out that shows him telling someone to murder someone and then that person murdering someone? Like, what did it actually show that he directed someone to do something and they did it? Does it really show that he's mind controlling them? I mean, even if you can see in the video that her eyes kind of glaze over and she seems to be in a trance, like, you know, what was he afraid of people thinking when they saw this video? I mean, okay that he obviously killed someone, but they wouldn't necessarily know that he was supernatural. And even that they know he killed someone, like, so what? This guy has a power where he can take out anybody he wants to by telling someone else to do it, which is kind of weird. And one assumes he can make them do other things when he's mind controlling them. So what was he afraid would happen if this tape got out, this recording got out? Like what, I don't understand what he was afraid of. I mean, I suppose if it went viral, that could create a problem. For him, but even then, it's not like he'd not be able to stop himself from going to jail or being given the death penalty, being convicted and going to jail or given the death penalty. He can control people's minds. So I never understood not only what he was, why he did what he did, what he got from it, but I also didn't understand why this video coming out was such a big deal and he would go and murder people. I mean, I guess he doesn't need a reason to murder people. He likes to murder people, apparently. But I didn't understand that aspect of it. It didn't seem to make sense to me that that would drive him to kill Shelly. And in fact, her friend before her, because she was connected to the video. And also, you know, Eric, I guess just because he was there. But like, I never understood that. I never got the big bad vibe from this guy. And part of that is the lack of explaining anything about him part of it is the motive that didn't make any sense 
And part of it is that I didn't think the actor did a good job. I like that guy in this kind of part. He plays this kind of part often, but I didn't, he didn't feel sinister to me or give me the creeps or anything like that. Anything like that. So I didn't enjoy that. And I was underwhelmed by Skarsgård's performance. I didn't think he was horrible. I certainly don't think he played it as a beta male cuck, you know, woke person or anything like that. But I was underwhelmed by the performance. I didn't think he had a great deal of gravitas. It was just very bland, his performance, I thought. Until the last 20 minutes where he starts really kicking ass. And I thought, oh, that was pretty cool. And the final confrontation is very cool. And, you know, I find stories of self-sacrifice for the cause of love to be compelling. I was like those. So I liked that aspect of it. Of course, that harkens back to the original. I liked the performance of the actress who played Shelley. But another thing that I didn't get really and truly was how they fell in love so deeply, so fast. I don't think that the groundwork was laid for that at any point. I didn't see really where they shared enough of themselves with each other at the beginning for them to develop those super, super deep feelings for each other. It just kind of came out of nowhere. And so it isn't so much that I didn't buy it because that can happen, but I didn't feel it. I wasn't feeling it. So I don't know, that didn't thrill me. But, you know, I don't think this was a horrible movie and I don't think it deserves the hate that it got before it even came out, which again, I contend leads to these movies ending up doing badly, which this movie apparently is, and then retroactively justifying the hate that was given to it in the beginning. It, it, it just feeds on itself. At the same time, other critics are saying it's not very good, which is fine. But I don't know, even there, I don't think that it deserves to be scored as low as it's getting scored. I think it was an okay middle of the road film with a final 20 minutes that's pretty darn good. And I guess I would give it a three. I think it's a three, just about out of five. So, you know, don't run out to see it. Wait till it comes on streaming or you know, home video or whatever, but I think it's worth a watch. It's just not any great shakes. At the same time, though, it's not this terrible, awful, horrible film that the usual suspect <laughs> made it out to be just based on the trailer and production stills. So there you go. That's all I have to say. I'm going to get out of here before I start repeating myself. I'll be back with another video soon. Until I return, I wish you peace and long life.